going to do it? Yes, I am. Okay. Hey everyone, it's Chris and Charlie here with Daily Motor and it is snowing. Which is okay because we have <laughs> X-Drive and winter tires and a whole lot of horsepower. That's right, and you've kind of amped up your voice slightly here today for yeah, this video. Yeah, I've been saving it for this. It's going to sound a little grovelly, but uh, I am assuming the B58 will bring out any last vocal enthusiasm that I have available for you all today. That's right. So today, if you haven't already been able to tell, or if you didn't read the title, we're driving the 2023 BMW M340i X-Drive. This car got an LCI for the 23 model year. It's got slightly different bumpers, that slightly is different lights. Like impulse for all of you. Uh, I don't know what he just said, but I'll find out later. And it also has iDrive 8, which is probably the biggest change for this model year on the new 3 Series. Look how cool this car looks with some real sidewall. That's right. So this car has some slightly smaller wheels for the snow setup. We're running on some Pirelli Soto Zero snow tires. And Charlie, can you check the speed rating for me? They're run flats. So that's good. So when I get a nail in it, then we can still drive it. <laughs> well, the X7 ones were probably run flats too. They are 99V. 99V. So, Let's. Can we get in the car to figure out what that is? Sure. Oh, you're driving first. That's right. We'll do the back seat on a non-snowy day. That's right. All right. Well, while he looks that up, we will take a look at the Monroney because we do have some options on this car. Not a ton. $68,470 suggested retail price. If you get a pretty modest spec on the M340i, you can hover right around 60 grand, which doesn't seem crazy. Melbourne red, black leather with blue stitching are our colors. Um, if you choose to drive this down to Mexico, you can go up to 149 oh on these God, tires. No way. So I think you'll be okay. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Uh, we also got the shadow line package, which is just the uh, dark trim and LED lights. Driver assistance pack, parking assistance pack, premium pack, uh, cooling and HP tire, high performance tire pack, which we won't be taking advantage of uh, this week because they're not on the car, although the snow tires are also uh, high performance, so that's good. M Sport Package Pro. Why does that need to be power? It's just going to not function in five years. <laughs> well, BMW and yeah. car owners can't be bothered. Uh, remote start. They charge you for remote start. Interesting. Adaptive suspension, BMW 50 years emblem. No, no, that's, that's, oh, yeah, yes, you're right. They, they do. do. I'm sorry. Yes, they do. Sensatec dashboard, which I assume just gives you stitching across it. Mm, makes it kind of soft. 350 for that. Wireless charging and uh, Harman Kardon surround sound system, which Charlie doesn't care for. It's not very good. He's going to tune the EQ for me, so it's not all horrible. Are you ready to start it? Yes. It's warm, so nothing too crazy. We love BMW powertrains. We genuinely do. And this B58 is such a fabulous motor. You can set up your individual uh, driving mode, which is nice. Although you still can't make it not do the fake engine noise, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, this looks all a bit basic. It I does, wish this were yeah. wood, but I understand that uh, this metal is more sport. This opens nice. Uh, would you like something? You see, heat is on. It's good. There we go. Okay. I, think I want to point something out. Yes. Uh, this car still has a heated steering wheel button, whereas the X7 did not. It's a bit strange. Do you think you can pay for like an M steering? Well, this is an M steering. Yes. Why is this wheel different than the old me? I don't know, because this also doesn't have M stitching. And the X7 had M stitching. Maybe this is the winter steering wheel. Or not. You're Sorry, also going to need defrost. Yeah. Is it not on? It's in balance. You need to put the climate control in sport. <laughs> <laughs> then it'll start doing defrost. I think if we turn that off. There we go. Now I can. BMW climate control is. And it, it's always been like this. It's, and it's not on. No, it is. That is on. See? Look. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. It's always very difficult to figure out. My mom always struggled to figure hers out. Life's better with a B58. That's right. You know the popping noises are actually artificial in this car. Everything's artificial in this car. Yeah. What is happening over I here? I think it's just a day of people being stopped on the side of the road. Or if you're a semi-truck driver, in the middle of the road. That's a cool color. Yeah. 
uh, I feel like that's maybe stew. All right, we need to be interesting. Uh, that's right. Yeah, we should. A little have to more do difficult that. for me and Chris when we're a bit hungry and I'm a bit hoarse. Yeah. But uh, how about you give us some specs on this car, Chris? Yeah. So this is a B58. And how much horsepower does it make? Three hundred and and three hundred and pound feet of torque. It's quite a bit. Uh, however, underrated. Yes. Yeah, definitely underrated. I, I assume once it's, we get on it, it's going to feel like more than that. Yes. What does it say on here how much power it makes? No, it doesn't. Why, Why does it have like a device on our person? Oh, look at this. Yeah, well, they this will, is good. They will have already. What? <laughs> <laughs> you asked why people were stopping. <laughs> It's just a name stopping in there. What on earth? Oh, this is nice and slushy for us. Oh, good amount of grip. grip. That's the Soto Zero. Yeah, that's... Ooh. That's making a lot of noise. Yeah. I think it's I think it's for the speakers, though. I don't know that it's really? legit. Yeah. Oh, well, well, yeah. Okay, so what is this, number four now that we've had stopped? I saw three just on my uh, sound test run. It's very strange. One, and I saw one person pull over actively. Front here. A little traction control intervention there. Fortunately, BMW provides us uh, fun having mode where you can get a little squirrely without killing yourself. Yeah, this car doesn't, it does not have death mode either. <laughs> no. It does have DSC off, but this is an X drive, so shouldn't kill you. Correct. Emphasis on the shouldn't. That's true. We do have paddle shifters, of which Chris is a big enthusiast of. Yes, I do like paddle shifters. And I like eight-speed automatics, which this car has as well. The ZF, as you would put it. Yes. Is it a ZF in this one? Yeah. It's our way of... Ah, oh, that's good. This car is so fast. It's, so fast. it's remarkable, because if you, you got to think about this as... it's It essentially replaced the 340i, which replaced the 335i. So yes. this is basically just like the new version of the 335i, and it's remarkable how fast they've made this car. Yeah. Wow, this is quite snowy. We play Chris's favorite game, which lane are they gonna take? Interestingly, they're gonna take the snowier lane. This is gonna make for a good winding road video today. Yeah, have fun with that. Also, is it gonna snow all day? Yeah. Apple, it's just always Apple does weather this said it wasn't supposed to snow today, so. Hmm, that's good. Remember reason. last week when it said it was supposed to be snowing and nothing And then it didn't, down. yeah. They're, they were savoring it. They're it's, saving their appetite. We're doing 55 miles per hour right now, and it, it's just so serene. It is. I mean, these cars mask their speed so yeah. well. It's arguably the most dangerous thing about them. Yeah. It's crazy how different of a vibe you get in the M340i versus the Mercedes C-Class. Yeah. It's, like, so hilarious. So much grip. In the wet. In the freezing. so much confidence too I mean <laughs> feel that grip I mean, it's yeah. really good for a snow covered road that's a little slicker yeah that's slick <laughs> I'm also I'm having to hold my camera do we how many miles do we have this time we have 3700 Quite a quite a good number, and let's go over the rough. Right, yeah, right you're, you're in sport mode. I'm in sport individual, so it's calm, damping. Oh, I see. It takes it really well, and very solid. Not a single creak or rattle. Yeah, here. it's pretty impressive. It doesn't make any noise. Yeah, we're in a sedan, so we're gonna hit the, the bump at 35. They've upped the quality with the new three series. No, this is this is just really a great car, truly. Much quieter and eco. Now it's an EV mode. Yeah, yeah. We're now we're now running on the 48 volt mild hybrid system. What Chris means Not by actually. that is this engine is so refined that it gets so quiet in Eco Pro. It's it's almost like you're driving an electric vehicle. Yeah. Why are you going over here, Charlie? Uh, well, see, I am a big. 
puncturing tires. And things. Yeah, okay. That's that's what I figured you were trying to do. Trying to limit me from... Speed limit's 52 on down here. Interesting. It's very specific. It is. So if you go 53, straight to jail. <laughs> yeah, I suspect we're going to have a really nice time having this car on. And ultimately, that's what makes this car such a good buy in this segment. Also, this isn't clear enough to drift around on. So what makes it such a good buy is people who buy an M340i or previously a 335i, yeah. they essentially want to have a no compromise daily driver. Yeah. And that is this. You can drive 10 tenths and be going very illegal speeds mm -hmm. and do so very confidently. Or you can drive it very chill and, and have a nice place to be in here. I mean, everything makes sense. Yeah. Very well laid out. It's very mature, yet still sporty. They really nailed, nailed the style. Still has a volume knob, too. Still has a volume knob. No gesture. No gesture control. That's an optional extra, which I don't recommend. I was going to say, one Chris is glad that we don't have. Did you write something out here? What? No. Hmm. Somebody write penis on the trunk. No, it just looks like it has a cryptic message, but maybe it's yeah. just a coincidental melting pot. <clears throat> Get this off Chris's back for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, that is a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, because the, the C300 had a power adjust. I suspect that after spending time, I mean, you've really become the resident compact luxury sedan Expert. reviewer on the channel because yeah. you own one. True. And you're also you've owned others. This is and yeah. You just you, you if it fits you as a person. You don't want to have children. You enjoy driving. You enjoy looking classy. This Thank is you. the the category for you. Yeah. So and we've had quite a few of them recently. So I suspect that you at the end of the day will appreciate the Mercedes more from a luxury quotient. Yes. But because you also value driving, and it's not 100% fair because there's a C300. Yeah. But that would compare to the 330i. Yes. But you've driven the 330i. I have driven that. Yeah, we all spent. Oh my god, we put a ton of miles on the 330i. So I think you'll probably end up liking the BMW just a hair more because of how great it drives. Yeah. Are you going to do it? Yes, I am. Oh. Sixty. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. That wasn't even launch control. I, yeah, no, I needed to have it in uh, sport. Whatever, we'll do one on, on the wrap when it's not soaking wet out. Uh, but no, to, to bounce off what you were saying, this it's remarkable to me and what I didn't realize is how different the Mercedes C-Class is from the BMW 3 Series. It's like, yes, they're the same size, yes, they're in the same segment, but that's it, the end. They're like, I don't even know that I would want to compare this car to a C-Class because like, it's they're a total, just totally they're, different approach to this segment. Yeah, and they're for and they're for different people. Yeah, definitely. You will have to compare it against the Cadillac, though. That is true. This is better in every single way, except that it doesn't have Super Cruise. That's where the Cadillac does. This doesn't even have the BMW driving assist at all. Oh yeah. Well, that's all right. Yeah, because it's a driver's car. I'm gonna be a paddle shifting enthusiast. He's a bobtailing enthusiast. Can we point out, after you navigate this roundabout, that the fact that this is real leather literally doesn't matter? What do you mean? Like, Sensatec would have felt just as fine. Like, this isn't a smooth, like, nice, silky leather. That's right. You do have to, you do have to pay extra for this, for yeah. this interior, which is just black. Um, so, yeah, I would agree with that. I like the blue cross stitching, but... I do, yeah. Um, I don't think I have $1,500, like... That's true. This car will be fantastic in four years for somebody that wants to buy it CPO'd, have it tuned, and make 600 horsepower. Yes, and only pay half MSRP for it. That's right. It. Yeah. Have it tuned. I have a buddy in North Carolina with an M4, uh, which has the S58, and he was telling me that people are tuning those up to like 900 horsepower, 800, 800, 800 900 horsepower, something crazy. But you can do crazy numbers with a B58 also. Think about how fast the normal M4 comp is. Why do you feel that you I, need more? That's true. The M4, and that's that can work itself into reviewing this car as well because this car is a nice, happy medium between the M3 X Drive 
in the 330i. This is like a perfect middle ground. But also, off of what Charlie was saying, the M4 and the M3 X drive are nauseatingly quick. I mean, they are like, it like hurts. It hurts when you launch them. The only reason that anyone should buy the M car over this is the novelty factor. Of the the few times that you get a new person in your car and you go, hey, watch this. Watch this, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or if you... you out. That's right. Or if you're driving at the Nürburgring weekly. Yes. Then you should probably have the M3 over the M3. But only for that long stretch on the last part of the track, because other than that, this has all the power you need. Yeah, and what cooling. Actually, probably well, has we'll fine cooling. Yeah. Uh, this will actually provide more of driving and enjoyment, I think, because you're actually going to use the power. You can use I mean, this we car. came out on that road and we're able to floor it and get a few shifts in and be like, ooh, that's fun. Yeah, this is a really nice, usable BMW that feels safe. It, it, it doesn't, it's not scary. It's fast and uh -huh. it's, it's, at a, it's at a good level, but it isn't scary. Especially if you're shopping around in this segment, this car's not gonna scare you. Whereas I could see, honestly, previous M car owners being like freaked out by the new G80 M3 because it's oh, yeah. just so ridiculous. Well, M cars didn't used to have to be the craziest thing in the world. I mean, they yeah. were made with six cylinders and everything. I mean, these, they still are, but yeah, right, yeah. Right. These um, these B58 cars feel more traditional M car than the actual M cars, yeah. which is kind of funny. But that's why we love them so much. That's why we recommend when people ask us what to buy, we say, oh, "Go get an X3 M40i. Go get an M340i. Go get an M240i," because they're all just very good balances. Yeah, and if you opt for the 30i, the four cylinder, you still get a really good car. Yeah, it oh, has a it's decent great. amount of power. Yeah. I, we're getting off on tangents. We're going to wrap this up. It's okay. Up here I soon. still have to park. But I appreciate that with BMW, if you get the base motor, you're still getting a luxury car product. Yes. Whereas a lot of times with the Mercedes and the Cadillac. The Mercedes isn't as bad, but I, I, bad. I, I get where you're going. And the Audi, if you get the base motor, you're kind of like, eh. All right, yeah. you know, like you you should have gotten the bigger motor because not only from a power standpoint, but it just doesn't feel luxurious. Yeah, yeah whereas, whereas all the BMW the, motors do. The four cylinder that you get standard in this does feel very luxurious. It's it's the quietest, smoothest four cylinder I've ever driven, and this is the quietest, smoothest six cylinder that I've ever driven. So, but it gets rowdy. It's where BMW excels. Yeah, well, of course, that's what these are for. Okay, well, we're going to spend the week, well, I'm going to spend the week with the M340i. Charlie is going to drive the, the, uh, M, the M2. Yeah. And, uh, the V58 wasn't <laughs> enough for me, so I will be departing but, this snowy land, and you will be seeing me driving the M2. Yeah, so hopefully look, with look forward to that big stick right here. Wrapping up our week with the 23 BMW M340i, and I spent a lot of time with this car this week, and I'm excited to get behind the wheel and talk about that. Charlie, you spent a day with it yeah no yeah. I'm, I'm glad that this week we got the cars properly situated for who's shooting what because yes last week we tried to do that and it flip-flopped yeah uh, but this week yeah it's uh it worked out well you spent a lot of time yes i want to point out that i just appreciate that it's not like a gray or a blue yes melbourne red is excellent and i didn't realize that melbourne red was metallic is it yes hmm. i mean i don't not believe you it's just hard to come tell. over here you don't see come much. look in the sun Oh, yeah, now I see the flake. Yeah, there yeah, you go. You just got to get the right... A little, little bit of flake. Yeah, and it's got Michigan colors on the bottom right now. It does, it's nice yeah. nice and salty. Two-tone Melbourne and Michigan. Would you get the uh, black... No. BS exp uh, package that we have on here? No. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I think it would look more sleek. No, but I would have black. these, because I quite like these. Yeah, of course. you got to pay for the 50th anniversary badges. Yeah. We'll be, hopefully, alive for the BMW M100 anniversary. I wonder what they'll do for that. When is that? I don't know. That'll be in 50 years. Be in 50 years. So we'll be... We'll be in our 70s. Oof. I'll be 74 and you'll be... 77. 77. Hopefully we'll still be sliding beamers around. Yeah, then. right. Yeah. And we'll just have to be those two boomers of the press event that... <laughs> yeah. You know. And all the kids on whatever VR platform that are shooting by then. We'll like, <laughs> right. God, these old YouTube, like, phony... <laughs> We're going to have the POV set up still and they're all going to be making fun of us. Like, why do they still invite these yeah. guys? Uh, this is such a good car. Like, we've driven other luxury sedans 
over the last few, uh, ah, that's my millennial music. I'm gonna have, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that'll be enough to copyright us. Yeah, oh, Charlie, that. there you go. Is that, is that a hybrid as well? Yeah. How did they do a conversion to a hybrid? Or whatever you no. call those, the accessibility names. Um, 82 Auto. Wow, oh, that's cool. Very bold. Let me turn your heated seat down for you. Let me turn that down. I think this is the best BMW. It is. It is quite This good. or the X3 M4DI? Well, the X7. Actually, no. The best BMW is the X5. Yes, but if I were to buy a BMW, this one would yeah, make the most sense. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I think it's the best. You know what? I was driving over here this morning, and you know what I love about this powertrain? Everything? Yes. You can have all this power, but you, you're you not making sacrifices for it. No. You're not making sacrifices in fuel economy. You got 34 on the, uh, did you test 36. 36 on these winter tires. Yes. Um... You're not making sacrifices in smoothness. It's butter smooth. And mm -hmm. it also, when you're driving around in comfort mode, it's not begging you no. to, to drive it fast. And or it's like silent. A or anything. Yeah. I mean, it's such a great bandwidth of a powertrain. This is the best no-sacrifice sports sedan. Yes, I agree. By far. Can it's... We, go ahead. Can we talk about this little shifter? I don't like it. I don't mind it. Really? Yeah. I understand how when the 992 911 came out, people didn't like a little nubby nub yeah. for a car like that. But for a car like this, I don't mind. It, it declutters this whole well, area, and you just get in and you tap. You, you, kind of you are continue. not a shifter enthusiast in automatics. Correct. And I am. I like having my little tap shift. But you got paddles still, so really not the end of the world. And I will agree with you that it does look better. I do like the way it looks, and I like the way that it opens it up in here, but I would still prefer my little slapstick. Well, and they thought of you and put ambient lighting on it. I saw that, and it goes with the color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah which is hilarious. Uh, also, we have a feature in here, the Rattly Perel bottle. Yeah, I, well, I you had me doing both. Oh, Slide this in your pocket. There, my zoom's in there. It's not going to fit. Um, anyways. Were you about to blame me for making you do both of I was going to say, I did both fuel economy tests this week, so what do you expect? You did them both in one day. Oh, yeah. And also when you're in comfort, the shifts aren't harsh. No. When you go in sport, so it shifts smooth. hard, but yeah. in comfort, it's still just as fast. It just shifts a little bit smoother. We've this, driven a lot of luxury vehicles lately. Yeah. I think iDrive 8 is my favorite infotainment system. Ah, that's that staying in also. That, that would be an Alyssa. Yeah. Okay. Buick Riviera. Mm -hmm. One of those just went on cars and bids this Cute. week. Anyway, I think iDrive 8 is one of my favorite infotainment systems. Yeah. It's it's, it's just so, it's aside good. from the climate thing. And you, well, you know what, though? The climate in this car is not as bad because it's all on one screen. Yeah, the X7, you have, you have to, to scroll, yeah. which is horrible. Look how good Google Maps looks. In, yeah, everything in, uh, looks CarPlay. quite nice. It's so large. It's easy to use. Yeah. Sport individual. Yeah. Cooking it. Also, that fake noise is just as loud as it should be. It's not ear splitting loud like it is yes, in the Yes, I agree. What do you think about the noises it makes between gears? The boom. It's better than the stupid little, like, weird spark sound that the M cars make. That's true. I was at a BMW event this week, last week technically, and they, a lot of these press events, they like to sh like brag about themselves while they're there, talk about how well the brand's doing and everything, right. and they were doing that for BMW M, and they were pointing out how Ooh, we gotta hustle. 2022 was BMW M's most successful year ever, they sold more M products than ever before and everything, and I was like, yeah, that's impressive and all, but you're counting things like this. Oh, are they? Well, yeah, because it's an M right. 340i. It falls uh, under the M brand all the time. Oh, a little Barbie Jeep. We should get that for Stu. We should, actually. Yeah. So I did think it's kind of silly. I mean, there's nothing about this car speaks M to me other than the fact that there's M on the gauge and there's M on the steering wheel. And, and the seats. The floor, and and the, seats. the door sills in the back of the car and the right. badges. But I, I think of this more as a, as just a BMW 340i or 335. Well, which me too. It's just a very healthy luxury sedan. It's hard to explain this car because, and this is nothing against this car per se, it's just for if you're trying to explain this car to someone who's not particularly educated with BMW's current lineup, 
What? The stop sign's been hit. Yeah. It wasn't me. We don't have an Equinox this week, so I would have had nothing to hit it with. <laughs> anyways, sorry. Uh, anyways, so I was trying to... I, I brought this car home earlier this week, and my mom saw it. Who is a BMW 3 Series owner? She owns two BMWs right sure. now. She still has her 3 Series, and she has an X3. And um, <laughs> she... She... She goes, oh, you have that M. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, but like, no. And she's like, what do you mean? It has an M on it. And I'm like, yeah, but it's it's not an M car. It's an M Sport. And she's like, okay, but like, what does that mean? Like, it, it says M on the back of the car. Right. So I, I had to I had to have this discussion with her and kind of explain it. She still, I don't think she still fully understands. But well, I don't I don't fully blame her for that. It is I don't either. No, and and I told her that. I said I don't blame you at all. Yeah. I'm just telling you that you're not technically correct um and then she's like she's like texting my my cousin who's a big bmw enthusiast okay. and uh, she's like yeah chris has an m3 this week <laughs> and this is after i had told her that it was not an m3 you're like mom and it's not I'm an like, m3 mom, it's, not it's, M3. it's Come just on. M sport but yeah bless her heart she tries sure. she i mean to give her credit she like came out looked at it and was super excited to see it and everything because she loves red and she loves BM, uh, BMWs, so yeah, the fact that she even cares enough to like come and look at it is is cool. But yeah, yeah, sorry, mom, if you're watching, she's probably not watching. But, Maybe yeah, not. So, yeah. Although she is a BMW. Enthusiast. That's true. Maybe she will. This is I, I I remember when we were driving the Cadillac around, and that that whole review is peppered with. Oh, you know, I actually really don't mind. Blah blah blah. Or, oh, I suppose this isn't too bad or whatever. Yeah, this is just like. Everything's it's good. incredible. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think I would change. Look, there's even stitching on the dashboard. And it's blue. And, it's blue, like and it matches the door panels all the way through. Mm -hmm. And it contrasts with the red on the outside. I appreciate that. Big old center. I mean, this could be manual, but the trunk's not manual, so that's something. The trunk is manual. Oh, that's what I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, trunk yeah. is manual. You don't have to stop powered. Uh, Eric got in this yesterday, and he said that the headliner felt like a wetsuit. Yeah, I could see that, <laughs> I mean, I don't mind it. But. All right. You got handles on all four outboards, though, and I appreciate that. Yeah. You spent a lot of time in this car. You did, I did. a good amount of commuting, both highway and everything. To... Sure, sure, sure. Talk about it. The car's going to shut itself. Yeah. yeah it it Plus, you probably took some photos of this throughout your week. Uh, yeah, I took some of it in Midland in front of my old school. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's kind of the main thing that I wanted to talk about here in this wrap-up is how incredible this car was in a road trip setting. Obviously we ran the fuel economy test averaging 70 miles per hour. It did 36 MPG. You all will see that video soon if you haven't already. But I also took this car on like a 200 mile round trip journey up to Midland, which is where I went to school and averaged quite a bit higher than that. Speed. Quite a bit higher than that. Speed. Speed wise. Yes. Yes. And it still did 27 MPG average 200 and however mile, many mile round trip. And not only was it very efficient, it was very quiet, it was very comfortable. At the speed I was at, which you know, mm -hmm. it was only at like 2,000 RPM. It was sitting at 2,000 RPM at many miles, many per, miles hour. per hour. And um, it was just the most pleasant experience. Very smooth, there's barely any wind intrusion. The Harman Kardon is decent enough to yes, like... It's, it's livable. Yeah, it's livable, it's got enough power to where you're not like wanting to off yourself listening to the sound system like you are in some vehicles right. and uh, the iDrive 8 is very pretty I don't know it was just it was such a great experience I emerged from that thinking this was the perfect car for me to take apart from something like an Alpina B8 can you, can you, oh yeah. does it drift at all you gotta really push it the tail end was getting a little loose there yeah oh well, I gotta look this way Although BMW doesn't care if we speed, do they? Right. I'm just showing everyone the poop factory. <laughs> yeah, the bandwidth is so impressive. They taught us how to recover at the Porsche Experience Center. Right. Or the Beep Experience Center since we're in a BMW. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, well, if BMW doesn't want us to reference Porsche, then they should invite us out to the BMW Experience Center. Oh, that's true. They, they do have fees. that. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, remarkable in Eco Pro, but we oh, know this yes. because the only Eco mode in any car ever that actually feels like it does anything is BMW. Right. Yeah. And it quiets the whole thing down. Yeah, it does. Which I appreciate. I was going to ask you, on having spent a lot of time in the car, did yeah. that road trip and everything, do you have any nitpicks? Like, what would you improve upon in a $68,000 car? As you know, manufacturers look to us for their feedback. That's right. So BMW can you get a on. can you get a higher sound system? No, no, no BMW. In I, these. Honestly, though, I I wasn't, I wasn't like offended by this sound system, but maybe I'd switch it. Just a little bit. I'm trying to think of what else I would change. Are you a wearing cologne enthusiast today? No, no, it's smell good. It smells different in here. Well, I mean, good. Not, well, not bad. Car last night. It could have been that. Oh, probably. Girls do be smelling good. They do be doing that. They do be. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm struggling to think of what I changed. Oh, I changed the front bumper design. Oh. Mm. Well, yeah, it's too much, oh, yeah, too much like grill going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, did the fact that this $68,000 car not have adaptive cruise control bother you. Well, yes, but I was wondering if maybe, is that a chip issue or is it a, no, just you, you, you can't just have it? No, you can, you just oh. have to pay more for it. Okay, well then, eh. It probably should come standard on this car. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. At least on the inline six. Yeah, at least on the M340i. Yeah. But you know what? I was getting very irritated with the lane assist and stupid adaptive cruise in the GR Corolla. Okay. So honestly, as I was floating up north in this with no driver aids, I was just like, yeah, let's yeah. go. No, I, I yeah. know. Some but it that should sign. have it still. Maybe um, it's the wind. It has been windy. It's very windy to yeah. blow over signs. But I don't mind not having adaptive cruise control. No, I don't either. I think it's annoying most, most I do of too. the time. Yeah. So I, I don't... leave this open so I don't forget my cord. I just think it's more of a principle thing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah this, this car is not a beeping at you in no, it doesn't nice. beep at you at all. Yeah. Which is why I love German cars so much. I love how I love this screen right here. Go. I'm pretty well versed at uh, using iDrive 8 at this point. Yeah, you must have watched my infotainment video. I did. Yeah, multiple times over and over. If you go to connect new device, it says oh. it is recommended to only add new devices <laughs> when parked. Well, I've never seen a car let you do it while driving. Yeah, That's they excellent. Yeah, don't care. They're like, if you're going to sacrifice your life, we well, understand what's more important. We know that they don't care because they put death mode in the M, the actual M cars. <laughs> yes. Let you put them in two wheel drive with DSC off, which we know is unpredictable and terrible. And will murder you. And will kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I, that's I, great. I, think I love great. that. Mm -hmm. It's all you know. Life's all about personal responsibility. If I want to Bluetooth my phone to the car while I'm driving, I would like to be able to do so. Yeah. In the same way, Hyundai, that I would like to have rev matching in eco mode. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a bit. But yes, you're right. It, cars should let you do as much as possible. Exactly. Yeah, I like this car. I would pay more to get this over a comparable Cadillac. Um, oh, yeah, I, definitely. I would definitely have to drive it back to back with the C300 because admittedly well, I didn't get to spend much time yeah, with either of those. The, the C-Class is brilliant in a different way though. More luxury. Focus. It's more luxury, yeah. This car is sportier. Um, and I mean that in the least cliche way as possible. I was possible. gonna say, you, you don't um, mean that without the... No, no, it but really it, it's, it, it genuinely is a sports sedan, whereas the C300 is more of a luxury experience. So if you want something that feels softer and more luxurious, then you go for the C-Class. But if you want something that is still comfortable, still pretty luxurious, but also can do zero to 60 in under four seconds and be efficient and you know, I, this got better MPG than the C300, which is a four-cylinder mild hybrid, so it's, Here, it's all about preference. Here's what I will also add to that. If you buy an M340i, you're never going to feel like, oh, I wish I got a 5 Series. If you buy a C300, there will always be that part of your mind where you're like, well, everyone's going to know I couldn't afford an E-Class. Yeah, right. Yeah. This mm. feels like a genuine, this doesn't feel like a, I've... I'm settling sort of car. Yeah. This feels like not. I've gotten exactly what I want. Yeah. We will not be ending our video there. He's unloading a forklift on a massive trailer. Maybe he had a couple more on there. Did you ever call it a high low growing up? Yes. Right. My grandfather called it a high low. Yeah, we did. You used to start like your uh, live drives over here. Uh -huh. uh, live drives and line go drives. I don't know why I stopped. I think the backdrop is just too bland. 
also like that because it's a German car and it makes sense you can put it in a park without the engine coming back to mm, life. Yes. Everything feels good too. The switch gear, everything you click yeah. and touch and adjust and it's just all very solid. Yes. Uh oh. Demonetized. And that's the 23 BMW M340i. I think Charlie has a closing remark. Trunk's pretty large, too. Okay. All things considered. Good. I also like that the grill is not larger. It's not like the Yeah, I, I like the grill. I just, there's so much grill. extra on the front bumper. Yeah. I think they if could it weren't black, it wouldn't look as large. Yeah. Well, I, th I think they could have done without that top yeah. piece. So, anyways. We like the M340i quite a bit, and we recommend that you go and buy one, which we actually don't say very often. Yeah. No, but I would 100% recommend this car to anyone that wants something in this class. Mm -hmm. It is excellent, and I don't really think I'd change anything about it that real. I wouldn't change anything, anything about it that matters. Sure. So, that's it. Yeah. Are we Paris and Nicole? I think we are, definitely, All right. this car. Well, we're Paris and Nicole here with Daily Motor, and as always, 36 MPG on. Or Melbourne right on. I was going to do Melbourne on, or I was going to go kind of an M car, but not actually an M car on. Or B58 but that, on. Or B58 on, or or many, on. many a thing on. Or just drive on. Or 3 Series on. Those wheels are nice, too. Mm -hmm. And that's Daily Motor. Looks like it'd be tough to clean them up. Mm -hmm.